All right, hello and welcome everyone. So the new event, Gargoyles Cry, has launched. Uh, so it is alive now. Of note, before we get into talking about this and discussing how to get the rewards, what's the most efficient way to play it, so on and so forth. This is the video and the event are really only for people that have finished Whispers in the Walls. If you have not done that, then there will be spoilers potentially here. Uh, so go go run Whispers, go complete that quest, go, go do that. Uh, before you look any further into this, this event's going to be running until January 15th, so plenty of time to get through all the stuff. Uh, with that, we're going to talk about the rewards and currencies and all the things for this. Uh, and in terms of requirements, this does require you be in a clan in order to get the rewards and such. And in addition, you need to have you or someone else in the clan that can place and build decorations. If you don't, then you won't be able to access the item that you need to use in order to redeem your rewards, and therefore you'll kind of be farming nothing. For that, from here, we're just going to jump in-game to show what the rewards are for this, and then talk about the different currencies, because it's a bit easier to digest whenever you can just look at the thing. So, this is the gargoyle that you place in your uh, clan, and then you can just interact with it. Mine has been placed up here. Uh, and from here, we have two things. We have Contribute and Browse Wares. So we're going to talk about Contribute first. For Contribute, you can see we've already completed the uh, first part here. Behind me, you can see that there is a timer. Um, this refreshes each week, and then we'll ask for more, and it will rank up your clan in terms of the event. This also has uh, importance for a thing that we're going to talk about unlocking. Um, but basically, you need the Curse of Knowing, the Curse of Hearing, and the Curse of Seeing. We're going to talk about where to get those and how momentarily, but basically you need to turn this in in order to rank your clan up for the event. And also, you need to turn those in in order to get access to the Krios Signa. So this is a community goal, which as more clans rank up um, and do all of that stuff, uh, we're going to have uh, the percentage build up to 100%, and then eventually this will be unlocked for the whole community. It only costs one splinter, which is basically nothing, uh, and is really nice but this is the community reward for like a bunch of clans taking part and ranking up over the course of the next month basically um so that is what gets unlocked and is like the reason to contribute and you know rank up for you know your full max clan and everything so that you can also get access to this with that we have some other rewards we have a three sigils here uh we have the uh clan sigils which are back for this event uh they are also uh quite cheap and then we have a new color palette which i think is quite nice uh, we have the Gargoyles Cry emblem, which of note, uh, this is not mirrored like some emblems are, and this is the one that should most be mirrored so that, you know, it's a pair of eyes, but um, a bit odd looking, let's just say. Uh, the Prominence Wisp Totem, this is the first time this has been available outside of a Twitch drop, uh, so it's a cosmetic exclusive here. Uh, Fluctus Rackskin is back, the CD Lacera and Basmu are here which uh, appear in events occasionally, but are good to pick up here. Three more glyphs uh, of the Cavia. Uh, then we, of course, have the Ballroom Simulacrum for those that want it. The Stance Form of Blueprints. And then we have every single one of the Eidolon Arcanes. So, the most notable thing here uh, is that we have Arcane Energize, of course. Uh, and this costs 12 Splinters, which we're going to talk about getting in a moment. Basically, if you need to get particularly Arcane Energize... Uh, this is the time to do so. It is There's never been a better time than now to get Arcane Energize with this event. I'll say that to start off here. But just in general, finishing a bunch of sets here is suggested if you are going to farm in a bunch and you like doing the event. The most notable thing being Energize, but just to go through some of the other ones that are relevant at lower rarities, we have Arcane Consequence. Very good for going very fast. Really easy to trigger. Arcane Nullifier, this turns off magnetic status, so if you want to run Eidolons, but you just hate the magnetic, usually Eidolon Hunters will equip this and just turn off magnetic procs entirely. Uh, and then at Uncommon, some of the notable ones here uh, are Victory. Even like one copy of Victory is pretty good for just getting some good health regeneration. If you just want a single copy of one, um, that's pretty good just for constant healing and is not bad. It's a nice cheap one. Uh, and then we also have uh, Guardian, which is a lot of armor. Usually doesn't come up now. Uh, Strike, which is quite good for a number of different melee warframes. We have that plus 60% attack speed, which is quite good. Uh, Arcane Trickery is specifically for Ash, uh, because he's the finisher kills frame and will maintain invisibility for long periods of time with this Arcane by using his four. 
Uh, and then the other notable one here in Uncommon is Arcane Velocity, which is basically the Mesa Arcane. She equips this because it works on her regulators for 120% fire rate, uh, so that's also quite good. Of the golds that we have here, uh, well, the one that's about to be notable is Arachne. Uh, this is 150% damage for 30 seconds on Wall Latch. The notable thing here is that we're about to talk about Styanax. This is the Styanax Arcane, because this works on Styanax's 4 and is one of the best ways to increase his damage overall. Uh, Arcane Aegis. Big thing about Arcane Aegis is that it is essentially the same at what it does, whether it's unranked or fully ranked. So this is another one where grabbing just one copy of it is going to give you a lot of functionality. Basically, what this says is that whenever this procs, you're invincible for 12 seconds because you're going to constantly be having those shields regenerated to you. And then, of course, because of that, you're going to constantly shield gate. Uh, so this is going to make you essentially invincible for 12 seconds when it procs, and then you'll end up with whatever shields you have after that. Uh, and then Avenger. Uh, Avenger is also a big one because this is a 21% chance on damage for 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. 45% critical chance doesn't sound like a lot because this isn't specific in what kind of critical chance it is. This is final critical chance, um, which basically means that if your crit rate after mods is, let's say, 20, this boosts it straight to 65. This adds on at the end of all other critical calculation and just slaps 45% right on the top. Uh, this is very, very good, of course. Uh, on damage can be a little particular to proc, but there are ways to force proc it on yourself, such as combat discipline, that make it pretty good and very consistent to run, especially if you're going the combat discipline route. Uh, but anytime you need a lot of critical chance, uh, it is the way to do it, and especially weapons that have very high critical damage and not a lot of crit, such as the Kuva Nucor, for example. Uh, or, well, Kuva Nucor has a pretty good amount, but the regular Nucor was the case for this, but the Kuva Nucor could also use it. Uh, you could make it things very, very consistent in terms of critting. Uh, and then, of course, for our Legendary Arcanes, our more expensive ones, Energize. This is basically just like Energy Economy Fix the Arcane. It is extremely, extremely powerful and highly sought after. Uh, and then we have Grace as well, which is kind of the health version of that less sought after because, of course, it's health instead of energy. Uh, and then finally, we have Barrier. Barrier is an arcane set that I don't have finished, and for good reason. Uh, it is the 6% chance to instantly restore all shields, but honestly, this is just the worst version of Aegis in pretty much all cases, honestly. So we almost never actually use this thing, um, but this would be the best time to get it as it is the same rarity as Energize and Grace. Uh, so take that for what you will. Uh, other things that do come up, uh, Fury, Critical Hit, this is another melee one, Rage uh, for primary weapon damage, and that, that can matter and come up, possibly. Uh, Pulse is energized but for health, which is usually not used, but could theoretically happen. Uh, and then I believe there's one other that is, yeah, Eruption. So Eruption also uh, is a little bit notable here at the end, just kind of like, you know, mention that uh, this set the 100% chance to knock down enemies on energy pickup uh, this is quite large it's about 30 meters or so maybe a little bit maybe a little bit larger uh, and if you are using gloom this is a popular like map wide crowd control because it slows down their falling animation so it just leaves them totally paralyzed for like up to like 10 seconds most of the time just for picking up an energy orb so some people do also go for that synergy uh, otherwise, the rest of these, such as like Arcane Ice and Warmth, really do nothing, and they're not really worth touching at all. Um, but yeah, there's a really good selection of Arcanes here, and the best time to grab them. So, with that, let's talk about getting the currency that you need for all of this shit, which is Grotesque Splinters. So, Grotesque Splinters are going to be gained from the same place that we're going to be getting our Curses. Our three curses and also grotesque splinters come from the new mission, the new assassinate mission in the Sanctum Atomica, uh, which is Efervo. So this is the new boss, the Murmur. Uh, and in addition to that, you're going to also have the sub objective on each one of these missions uh, to defeat an angel from the Angels of the Zaramon quest. So you'll need to defeat an angel and then also defeat the Murmur boss. Uh, and you also have to collect the 30 eyes for it. That being said, for those of you at this point that don't know about the super boss version of the Murmur, you can fight that version, and there is an additional reward, but it is not super worth it. The three different reward sections, I guess I'm going to say, are we have regular path. Regular path, just do the mission, kill the angel, kill the Murmur, lower level stuff, not a big deal. 
that's going to give you between one and three of the splinters. From there, if you bump it up to a steel path, this bumps up sliver, uh, splinters from three to five, or up to three to five, rather, uh, up from one to three, which I really think that the base version should be two to three, but it's not that big a deal, I guess. Uh, and, of course, that makes the mission much more difficult. The super boss that is available here is what we're calling it, secret boss, if you must. Uh, is the full version of the boss, which is if you go to a Fairbo and you are collecting the murmur, or you're collecting the eyes to go get to the murmur fight, instead of collecting the minimum amount you need, which is 30, if you collect double what you need, which is 60, it will power up the boss very significantly. Uh, and that will, instead of giving you just two curses, you get a, you get a random selection of two curses each time you beat the boss. It will instead give you two of each of the curses. Now, notably, fighting that version of the boss does not give you more splinters, which is the reward you actually probably give a fuck about. Uh, I really think it would be interesting if it gave you double splinters, but it's probably good that they don't encourage you to fight that version of the boss, because I think that boss is going to be pretty much unclearable for most players. Uh, it is worth noting that that version of the boss has a one-time special reward uh, of a cosmetic, which is the, uh, I'll show it now, it's the Manus um, Sumdali. So that's, this is the Manus Sumdali, it is some, some grippers for your, uh, for your ship here. There are, there are a few of these that exist, in including the MR-31, and then like the ones for your different um, focus schools, uh, but this one is exclusive to having beaten the big super boss boy. Uh, so if you want that, I would say it is worth clearing one time on like the super boss version just to get that and say you did it. Um, but be warned that that version of the fight is much, much more difficult and it will likely be too hard for most people. The steel path version, however, is very doable. We're going to talk about a lot of the gear to bring to that. Uh, and it also is worth noting that Steinax is what I cleared the super boss version with. And I do think that Steinax is probably the best at clearing the super boss version if you must. With that, let's talk about the build. So this is the build on Steinax. Uh, it is pretty much the same as it has been, with one notable change in that I have included Arachne now. Normally, this is not needed, but at this level of content, you are probably going to want it. But without it, you are still going to perform just fine. Uh, it is just a good, significant boost to what Steinax is doing with using his four a bunch. Uh, this is also Nourish Steinax. So the whole kicker here with like what Steinax is doing and the reason why this is so good is because you use Rally Point, which is going to be generating 8 energy per second for you and your entire squad. The, the Also, the and the entire squad part is important. Uh, and we're going to be using Nourish, which gives us a 3.67 multiplier on our energy rate, which means that we're getting, you know, you know 20, 30 plus energy per second uh, with this build. And we're also getting 200% viral damage, and that is before Molt Augmented kicks in. So a significant elemental buff plus constant energy for us and the entire squad is very, very powerful, especially with good duration. In addition to that, we have Theros Strike. This is a full defense strip that particularly, and importantly for this mission, works on the Angel. The Murmur boss does not have armor, so it's not important for that. Uh, but this works on the Angel, which makes clearing the Angel much, much faster. Uh, and of course, we're using Final Stand quite a lot. This does significant damage both to the Angel and it works on the Murmur boss. And it is very good for clearing the adds for the Murmur boss. Uh, and is just generally good for killing enemies in the mission. In addition to that, because our energy economy is more than perfect with Rally Point and Nourish, this can essentially never run out of uses. You can pretty much just chain uses of this one after the other. And you never have to worry about how much energy it's costing you. Because you are generating tons and tons of energy. In addition, Nourish buff affects the damage of Final Stand. So you're getting a nice buff there. Um, and, you know, Sans having a very good weapon for this, which we are going to talk about, it is a very easy way to clear this mission. So with that, that's pretty much what's up with the build. Uh, of note in this build, you do not have to use uh, Augur Secrets, and I would actually particularly suggest Augur Message if you do not have the Archon Shards that we're about to talk about, as you'll probably want a little bit more duration and a little bit less strength than what just these mods will provide. Other note that is important, uh, Maxed Umbral Intensify and Maxed Prime Flow are not absolutely integral to this build. If you have like a rank 8 Umbral Intensify uh, and like a regular flow 
you're going to be fine. Regular continuity, same deal. Although if you do that, you will absolutely, definitely, 100% want to have Augur Message. Um, just because of the duration needs of this build. Uh, but other than that, things are going to be pretty normal here. Also, this build is not actually 5 Forma, because you can see I have some wrong polarities and some unnecessary Forma like this one on Stretch. Uh, so it is it is a bit cheaper than it might originally look. In addition to that, though, the shards that I do have on Cyanax are three duration shards. Uh, and then I have a maximum energy filled on spawn shard. Now this, you absolutely do not do not feel like you need to run this. The only reason I'm running this is because uh, I want to be able to cast Rally Point and Nourish right at the beginning of the mission. Uh, and for doing that, I need a little bit more max energy on spawn in. So this is purely quality of life and not like, you know, absolutely important or anything like that. Uh, and then we have parkour velocity, which also it makes me faster, which is good and like makes running the mission better, but it's not actually going to make a huge difference in terms of if you can do the mission or anything like that. So really don't worry about having this either. Um, and like I said, these can just be, you can swap out a little bit of strength for these duration shards. So really shards, you don't need anything too particular, uh, but Synax is absolutely excellent for this mission. That being said, Steinex is not the only one that can do this mission. Uh, if you're really looking to speed run through this mission, a Titania build is probably suggested. Um, Nourish Titania is a very popular one that is very powerful if you're going to be using her guns quite a bit. Uh, and then also using like the new radiation mods and stuff on her guns. Speaking of guns and such, though, uh, for anyone wondering what I have found to be the best, uh, a bit of a surprise, the regular Furious Incarnate. So this has been an absolutely stellar weapon for me. Uh, I have changed the build on it to this. Uh, we're using the new Accelerated Isotope mod for radiation damage and fire rate. Uh, the new boss is weak to radiation, so this is great here. Uh, and we also are now allowed to use radiation plus heat because of this new mod giving us combined radiation and Scorch not combining with it. So we can still have heat for the purposes of Cascadia Flare, which is giving us 480% uh, damage so that we don't have to run like a hornet strike in this build to make up for anything in addition to that uh we are just generally just doing good stuff this is going to stack an absolute ton of heat procs this does extremely high dps we're doing we're like we're talking about like each hit of this does like 10k uh well between 5 and 10k depending on how many people are in your squad uh because attenuation does change that a bit um but yeah like this this build is excellent uh it is incarnate only or options if you do not have access to the incarnate system or something, because I know that a lot of people like you know just aren't there yet. That's just not happened for them yet. Uh, the main thing that you want to focus on is a weapon that is not going to have ammo problems. So, obviously, all of the incarnates really don't have ammo problems because they get free ammo when they transform, and it's pretty easy to transform on both of the bosses that are in this mission because uh, the orbs that are inside the murmur are its heads, and the angel has a pretty obvious one. Uh, Outside of that, I would probably suggest a kit gun to you. Uh, this is available to newer players. Specifically, this build, which is Spore Laser Deep Breath Haymaker, is available very, very early if you have ranked Deimos a little, little bit and ranked Fortuna just a little bit. This is a very good option for you. If you're looking for an optimal one of these, uh, the Death Cap, which is Spore Laser Splat Haymaker, is what I would suggest. Uh, and build-wise, you're going for something like this, though I would tell you to go for the radiation version of this build which would be using, ideally, the new mod Accelerated Isotope, uh, and then putting another uh, of the Heat dual stats here. So you would just Accelerated Isotope, and then your uh, Scorch mod right here to adjust the build a little bit. And then these weapons have infinite ammo because they can equip packs charge. So even getting one copy of this Arcane means that you have infinite ammo. You just have to wait for your weapon to recharge, which is not really a problem at all. Uh, and then with that, you're never going to have any ammo issues because, of course, they're just going to recharge. Uh, so this uh, is a good one that I would suggest. Uh, other than that, I have the Medusa. Uh, all of the By the way, all of the best kit guns, they're all just made with whatever the front is and then Splat and Haymaker. Uh, so that, that's what all the secondary uh, uh, kit guns are. Uh, but yeah, for, for those, um, I, would, I would suggest the Gaze and Spore Lacer are probably pretty objectively the two best. Um, but if you have like a tomb finger build from a, like a you know quite a while ago, whenever that was like the meta, I think that's going to work fine for you. Uh, there's plenty of decent options there uh, for your different weapons there. But yeah, other stuff that I have heard good things about uh, Tenet Cycron, I have heard works quite well. This is also a battery based weapon, so there's no danger that this is going to run out of ammo. Um, Incarnate wise, stuff like the Bronco I've I've seen is pretty good. 
Um, I would not suggest running something like the Piranha. It's very ammo inefficient. Uh, and then, like, you could just run the Grimoire. Grimoire has infinite ammo, and it's not a bad weapon at all. Uh, if you, and I'm going to make a whole video on this, but if you wanted to run that, you could run this. Probably just swap out Pestilence um, for that new radiation mod that I've been mentioning. Because uh, that's going to make it radiation heat, which is quite good. You can use Cascadia Flare to do all of that good stuff. Um, but yeah, and then other secondary weapons. Uh, the thing about secondary weapons is you do for you do generally want to run secondaries because Cascadia Flare is a mod that exists, or an arcane that exists, rather. The 480% here is really, really great. Uh, and in terms of primaries, it's going to be a bit tougher. The Miter Incarnate here is excellent, uh, but primaries have a bit of a problem in that almost nobody has farmed um, Primary Blight. So Primary Blight, this is on Toxin status. You get 3-6 uh, critical damage and 1-8 multi-shot. That stacks 40 times. So if you have a weapon that can proc a good amount of Toxin, you can get good crit damage and good multi-shot out of this, which saves you from having to try and stack Deadhead or try and stack Merciless, because there's not a whole lot of adds in these fights. Uh, so you can't really guarantee you have these. And Frostbite, which is the much easier to get one of the, the mods between Blight and Frostbite, uh, cold statuses don't work on the boss. So you can't use this one. So the only available one that you can just work by shooting at just the boss is Primary Blight in this case, which is unfortunate. Uh, that being said, if you do not have those, Primary Deadhead is going to be fine just for the additional headshot multiplier. It's going to be helpful at least. And then I would suggest running Serration in the main uh, just so you can make sure you have a good chunk of that damage. Otherwise, stuff stays pretty much the same here. Uh, other than we are running radiation electricity on the primary weapon. That's because for uh, the primary, uh, I just not only is the boss weak to electricity radiation, uh, the angel is also weak to electricity. And because this doesn't have to uh, bump up our damage by using heat with the uh, Cascadia Flare, that's really solid. Uh, also, of course, in terms of melee weapons, uh, Glaive Prime works very well on both of these bosses. So if you have like the tenant, uh, or not the tenant, the um the Zorus. Uh if you have the Zorus, this is probably gonna do quite well, although maybe be a little slow on each of the bosses, on Steel Path at least. Uh but then Glaive Prime is going to be an excellent option for either or. Uh and then if you are a very tanky Warframe, then you could probably just get in there with kind of, you know, a number of different melees. You could go Colervo and get in there with heavy attacks and probably do some good work. Uh, and stuff like that. But yeah, that, that's that's what's up there. Uh, in terms of like what the rewards are to what you should be doing, as I mentioned, you want to just do the Steel Path version. The three guaranteed and then up to five is just fantastic for farming the new Arcanes. Uh, and you can expect probably four Energize, specifically, obviously, the more expensive, much harder one to get. Uh, for a full set of that, it's going to take you probably somewhere between 6 and 10 hours, depending on how long it takes you to do that mission. And if you get lucky, probably it could be less than that as well. But yeah, that's pretty much what's up. Uh, I am going to include a solo run uh, that I did of this mission uh, with, well, basically this build. I had the Furious equipped, of course. Um, it is, I think, a very good time. It is basically just like, you know, a an almost flood followed by a fight with the angel which i think is an excellent fight followed by the fight with the murmur which i think is a very fun fight um so you know not too much to say uh, if you do try the super boss or are having trouble with it or want to see how i did i did do it on stream also before this video went live my most previous stream from before this video goes out anyway uh, is me doing a bunch of testing and running a bunch of runs uh, on that if you want to see me run it more than just the uh, uh thing i have included here but yeah uh, that's going to do it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the event. I will be doing a ton of it on stream to finish all of my Eidolon Arcanes, of which I'm fairly close. So yeah, that's uh, that's going to do it, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy the event. Propose probes. Uh, take one and fill the waiting eyeball full of visionary juice. In 
check the victory of the Tenno and keep it intact. We require it to see on our behalf. the Atropos Serum and defend the boggling eye as it searches. We must see more. I'll locate another probe. Searching, you risk discovering a purer, more virile foe. Mm. It is waking up. Unmake it! Quickly now! Before my miscalculation takes effect and draws the attention 
Orb protects the angel. Pass through to destroy it. Burn. You saw nothing, remember? <laughs> Everybody's talking about you, Bird, because everybody knows Bird's as good as his word. <laughs> Bird? Bird? lingering curse and pray no one heard what happened here no. so did not happen purpose All right, Whispers in the Walls has arrived, which means many new guides are on the horizon. 
Uh, and thank you very much to all of my patrons for the support, especially $10 patrons, Alex Barnum, Angel SBM, Arbiter Daydream, Vanuven, Automatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Kane Alathra, Dylan Dorsky, Thrain, Lafon, James Harsthorn, Casey for Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Lord Acorn, Lou Zanth, uh, Mikkelkel, Inti Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Remoxidate, Sharp, Camerillic Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, Tomeworm, Victor Palmer, Waifu Wars, and Wildad 1. Uh, and also, of course, thank you very much to all of my $5 patrons as well. It is much appreciated. Uh, lots of new guides coming with Wizards in the Walls, and also, uh, they changed new player progression again, so I need to redo the CPR that did just release, uh, but that shouldn't take too much time, and we should have an updated new player guide uh, for the entire chunk that's already out very, very soon. Uh, they did improve it, though, so good stuff. <laughs>